Coming to you from the Hudson Media Group studio, this is Talking Politics. And I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, Top 100 Latino via the Latino Spirit Online magazine and the Garden State's most beloved and factually accurate conservative, yes, it's me, Fernando Uribe. Hope you all have a wonderful uh, week, certainly as the month of June comes to a close. We get to celebrate Independence Day coming up uh, next week. But as always, there is a lot to discuss, so let's get started. Here's what I'm thinking about right now. Folks, let me just uh, put on my educator hat for a second. Let me just read you a very important part of the Bill of Rights because it'll be very important during this monologue. And it's about the Tenth Amendment, and it reads as follows. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. That's really important to remember as this monologue continues. Now, again, folks, as we all know, last week was quite uh, the week you know, in jurisprudence as the United States Supreme Court handed down some very interesting decisions. As a devoted, again, and uh, dues-paying member of the National Rifle Association, hearing the court decision as it pertains to the state of New York was uh, music to my ears. Again, as someone who was a responsible gun user and owner, I certainly took quite uh, an enormous amount of satisfaction seeing the court rule correctly in that case against the state of New York. But of course, as we all know, uh, last Friday, um, as we all suspected because it was leaked months before, the landmark decision from 1973 concerning Roe versus Wade as it pertains to abortion was indeed overturned by a 5-4 majority. Now here are some of the effects, again, about why this case is so significant. Now, a big question people would have is what would happen if the Supreme Court ultimately overturned Roe versus Wade? Well. Ultimately, the answer is that some states would outlaw abortion, but others would not. So quite frankly, folks, as we come to learn, again, federalism, the Tenth Amendment, I feel like I'm having class here uh, once again, and being the uh, history professor that I am, I mean, certainly I wanted to make sure that I included the language of the Tenth Amendment because it is so crucial today. So certainly we talk about the effects of overturning Roe versus Wade. Now again, the decision in 1973 made abortion legal. Now, overturning Roe versus Wade doesn't mean a nationwide ban on the practice, despite what the liberal media and all the feminist hysterics and all the cat ladies who stink of cat piss would say otherwise, right? Because we've been seeing it on the nightly news, on social media, you name it, they've been having a meltdown about it. But rather, it would give jurisdiction back to the states, each of which would be able to decide whether or not to allow abortion within its own borders. Now, what would the states do likely if the ban were lifted? Well, again, we've seen that four states have passed laws that would immediately outlaw abortion if Roe was indeed overturned. They include Louisiana, Mississippi, North, and South Dakota, respectively. Seven have laws expressing their intent to restrict access to legal abortion in the absence of Roe versus Wade. They include Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, Louisiana, Missouri, North Dakota, and Ohio. Two states have passed new abortion bans since 1973, which have been declared declared unconstitutional, Louisiana and Utah collectively. Now, 13 states indeed have retained their pre-Roe abortion bans, which are currently unenforceable in Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, Colorado, Delaware, Massachusetts, Michigan, Mississippi, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Vermont, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. And of course, some states that still have pre war pre, you know, uh, Roe versus Wade abortion bans may reconsider them should Roe fall, which is ultimately what they did. Now, again, the Center for Reproductive Rights also predicted that some states that don't have bans now would indeed institute them uh, if the Supreme Court uh, gave them the authority to. So in all, really, the center estimated that 21 states are likely to outlaw abortion immediately. Now, this assessment is based not only on current law, but the political makeup of certain state legislatures. According to the center, those states are, again, Alabama, Arkansas, Colorado, Delaware, Kentucky, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri, Nebraska, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Texas, Utah, Virginia, and Wisconsin. Now, on the other hand, abortion is likely to remain legal in many states, which include here in New Jersey and even across the river in New York. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that's very interesting about the sort of the the hysteria from last Friday and the tantrums and the meltdowns that we have seen is that people just don't have their facts correct. As usual, that's very symptomatic of the left. Now, one of the things that really caught my eye, again, as I was commenting on social media and people were unfollowing me or unfriending me because 
again, it's quite impossible for a lot of people to have discussions rationally and logically and objectively. Yes, it all falls into emotions, and I get that we're human beings. But folks, you know, when it comes to issues like this, you have to be able to be adults. You know, pull up your pants, you know, fasten that belt buckle, roll up your sleeves like an adult, and sit down and talk policy and talk about it in a way where it's objective and logical, okay? If you want a hashtag and virtue signal, be my guest. That's on you. I'm over here talking policy and talking solutions. So we're not the same, all right? For a lot of my liberal colleagues, whether it's in academia, whether it's in journalism, whether it's in philanthropy or activism, you name it, we're not the same. I'm over here being the adult in the room. I don't know what you guys and girls are doing, all right? But this is the thing about last weekend's decision. All we saw over the weekend on the usual garbage channels like MSNBC and CNN and all the other garbage news sites here in New Jersey, right? NJPBS, New Jersey Spotlight News, Insider NJ and the like were all, of course, publishing columns about the hysteria about what this means. Here's a news flash for people here in New Jersey, especially, again, for those feminists and those cat ladies that stink of cat piss that were, again, just having meltdowns at either in front of the Supreme Court building in Washington or in front of the state capitol building here in Trenton or across the country. For those of you that got all upset, what you're basically bitching and moaning about is not being able to end pregnancies in states that you don't live in. Because here's a newsflash about New Jersey, okay? If a woman gets knocked up tomorrow, it is relatively easy, affordable, and accessible for her to terminate that pregnancy should she consider to do so. And let me just preface this by saying that I'm a guy who's pro-choice. Okay, I've never been someone that has been, again, anti-abortion per se, but I've also understood the necessity when it comes to cases of incest, sexual assault, where the health of the mother is, is on the line, perhaps a baby will be born, stillborn, you know, and all of those tragic circumstances. I get all that, and I see the need for abortion. But when, you, when you talk about abortions in the state sort of in the sake of, you know, late-term abortions or as a method of birth control, that, that, I'm not a fan of that, okay? So let me just preface this by saying, I'm a pro-choice guy, all right? But again, here in New Jersey, whether it's insufferable groups like Women for Progress, whether it's, you know, the New Jersey Alliance for Immigrant Justice, Make the Road New Jersey, whatever, and take your pick, folks. There's no shortage of insufferable left-wing organizations made up of, like, annoying feminists and insufferable cat ladies, Okay. But here in New Jersey, again, if you get knocked up tomorrow, ladies, again, biological women, by the way, it's funny how now we know how to define what a woman is, especially after the, the road decision. But again, if you get knocked up tomorrow, abortions are, again, accessible and affordable here in New Jersey. Okay? It's single girl summer. So, you know, for a lot of ladies that have your usual drunken weekends during single girl summer, guess what? On Monday morning, when you wake up from your, your three consecutive nights of hangovers, guess what's going to happen? You'll have access to plan B it's still relatively easy to obtain and purchase, okay? So your reproductive rights and your reproductive freedom here in New Jersey is fine. It's not in danger, okay? And that's what, again, many on the left won't tell you. They'd rather, again, virtue signal and hashtag and have meltdowns. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, just go on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know, Snapchat. I mean, the level of infantile meltdowns by grown ass women is quite embarrassing. And women that I know that have like advanced degrees, which is even more embarrassing, okay? You're grown ass women acting like children, acting as if all of a sudden, yeah, you know what? Let me go and play dress up and wear an outfit from The Handmaid's Tale, the popular series on Hulu and the book itself, because you wanna have a meltdown in New Jersey. Uh, no, your reproductive freedom is fine. And whatever the state of Texas chooses to do, whatever the state of Mississippi chooses to do, that's their right. It, again, it's federalism. It's the 10th Amendment. It's what allows them to have that autonomy. Okay? People in Texas and Alabama and New York, excuse me, and Mississippi and Florida don't care anymore about what we're doing than, than we should care about what they're doing. Do you think that people in Texas care that the legislature just passed this week a $50.7 billion budget? as it continues to escalate here in New Jersey, that spending continues to escalate, that gas prices are still on the rise, that we're still spending money on some insufferable left-wing bleeding heart causes in New Jersey? Of course not. They're worried about their state. Don't worry about what's going on in Florida. Don't worry, don't worry about what's going on in Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, wherever. Again, ladies and gentlemen, okay, who want to go on these marches and participate in all these rallies, okay, 
Think about what's going on in New Jersey. Your rights are fine. Your rights across the river in New York are also fine. But if you want to keep having meltdowns, I'm sorry. It's not doing you any good. And it makes you look rather foolish because, again, it's reminding us all that you don't know, or at least you weren't aware, when they taught the U.S. Constitution in history class or if you took a constitutional law class. Well, guess what, folks? In the Bill of Rights, the Tenth Amendment is crystal clear. And that's what the decision concerning Roe versus Wade is based on. Abortion has not been banned nationally. It's just been relegated to the states. Do your homework, folks, because I'm tired of doing it for you. And that's what I'm thinking about right now. In the latest edition of the five-time award-winning podcast, Talk in the Hudson, which you can listen to every single week via www.blogtalkradio.com slash Talk in the Hudson, was the president of the Jersey City Young Democrats, Corey Gariga. And we spoke for over an hour on a plethora of very important topics. And here are some highlights for your consideration. First and foremost, we talked about what to expect from the Jersey Young Democrats now that he is the president of the organization. And quite frankly, during this midterm election year, there certainly is not a shortage of topics to talk about. Let's hear what he had to say about it. Uh, Corey, good to have you on here. How are you, brother? Thank you. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you again for having me on. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. I've followed your show now for quite a, quite a while. Um, I'm very familiar with you, so I'm here. Okay, well... Uh, I'm glad you are. Uh, I, I'm certainly, I, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, not sure what you've liked about the show or haven't liked, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But let's let's get to some good, you know, good old bread and butter questions. As I say, uh, Corey, uh, we know that uh, Hudson County is as blue as Windex. Um, as someone who was the chair of the Hudson County Young Republicans for five years back in the day. Uh, I know that was a challenge for me to register voters, to get people galvanized and motivated. I would say that that's clearly not an issue for, let's say, the Jersey City Young Democrats, where there's a strong concentration of Democrats, uh, I would argue, working class, blue-collar Democrats that comprises a lot of Jersey City. Is that fair to say? Yes. So even within for internal Democrats, you know, mobilizing, organizing and mobilizing, uh, especially, you, you know, that age range that we're focusing on, 18 to 40, can be hard sometimes, you know. And I think that's more so location-based. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into consideration with that location-based. Uh, there's passion, you know, and also involvement from our leaders that really drive, that help drive that passion uh, to help uh, mobilize and organize those individuals. So um, right now I'm in a place where I kind of have best of both worlds, so to speak, where sometimes it's tough to uh, get a group together and, and some days it's easier. And it really depends on what our target range is there. Secondly, we discuss the significance of overturning Roe versus Wade, as we know that the Jersey Young Democrats join elected officials and other community organizers and activists collectively to voice their frustration about what happened. And I had to sort of, you know, take Corey to task, not specifically with him, but, but some in the organization who, again, seem to be more intent on virtue signaling and hashtagging than really being realistic about what's going on with Roe versus Wade and the overturning of the landmark decision. Let's hear what Corey had to say about it. You know, when I see activists saying nonsense, like avoid the court, we all know that I get it. It's cute. It rhymes and it, it's good for a rally. It's good for hashtagging and virtue signaling. But I, I mean, it, both sides are guilty of this. I'll be the first one to admit it. But, but stuff like this, you know, abort the court and not the church, not the state. Woman must control her. I mean, I don't know, man. If you've seen my social media and my content, you know, I'm one of those guys. I don't subscribe to a lot of this stuff. <laughs> You know, I don't subscribe right. to this hashtagging, virtue signaling, woke nonsense. I'm probably the conservative Bill Maher when it comes to this sort of mm. stuff. But I get it. You know, it, it's, it's a case that's riling up a lot of emotions. But let's dissect this a little bit, Corey. Let's separate. Let's take emotion out of things. Let's, think, let's be objective here. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on my academic hat for a second. You know, I'm going to speak as an educator, and, and just say it like this. I'm a pro-choice person. I'm someone that has always supported a woman's right to choose. I understand the, the necessity of abortion. Uh, I'm not a fan of late-term abortions, specifically, you know, when we're talking about healthy babies and stuff like that. But when it comes to incest and sexual assaults and, and, and other vile acts, 
that contribute to her pregnancy, yes, I understand the importance and the necessity of an abortion, an accessible abortion. Um, what happened last Friday, again, and, and you don't need a law degree, folks, for everyone listening at home, to know this. Again, what the Supreme Court simply did was not outlaw abortion nationally. They just simply said, hey, we're going to kick it back to the states, let the Tenth Amendment take precedent, and that's what's happening. Now, again, let me be fair, here in New Jersey, if a woman gets impregnated, her ability to reconsider her pregnancy or the ability to get a plan B, for example, isn't very difficult. So no one's reproductive rights in New Jersey are in danger, folks at home. No one's reproductive rights in New Jersey are under attack. Uh, that's not an issue here. What concerns me, Corey, is, again, you know, I don't live in Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, or Florida. I'm not concerned with what they're doing. That's, that's their states' rights, state autonomy, whatever. Just like, in, in, Flor- just like in, in Texas and Alabama and Florida, they don't care what we're doing up here. They don't care that we coddle, you know, illegals, and that we do a lot of things here that are very left-wing. They don't care anymore about what we do. I don't think we should care about what they do. That's just my view of the Tenth Amendment and what happened last week. I get it. It's an emotional issue. But here in New Jersey, though, Corey, I, 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 I have to laugh at, like, the outright hysteria about what happened. You know, mm-hmm. I get it. It's good for fundraising. It's good for, for hashtagging and virtue signaling and getting on social media and going on rants and crying and moaning and, oh, my God. I'm down, folks. You live in New Jersey. Now, as far as the rest of the country, hey, that's a different story, Corey. Uh, where am I wrong in the way I'm dissecting this, sir? Well, my point of view is this. Yes, you are absolutely right. New Jersey, New Jersey residents can rest assured for now. I don't know. I can never say at this point in time, I can never, ever say that will never be the case down the future. And that overturning of Roe v. Wade proves that. With that said, the reason why we felt it was important to have that rally on Saturday on the steps at City Hall at 2 p.m. was because we were there to show solidarity through the rest of the country who is affected by this. And on top of that, show them that there is a safe space here in New Jersey for them if they so choose Mm -hmm. to come. It was a very interesting episode with Jersey City Young Democrats President Corey Gariga. And you, you can listen to it in its entirety once again by going to www.blogtalkradio.com slash Hudson. You can download the episode and listen to it anywhere at any time from any PC, Mac, smartphone, or tablet. And I'll continue bringing these exclusives every single week on Blog Talk Radio. And here's some local stories for your consideration. Now let's start in Jersey City. And again, speaking of the Jersey City Young Democrats, I want to thank John Hines for from the Hudson County View for his report on this story. Now, the Jersey Young Democrats, along with elected officials and other community organizers, gathered in front of City Hall in downtown Jersey City to voice their displeasure about the recent overturning of Roe versus Wade. Now, here are some quotes that we heard during this rally. Quote, we need to stand and show the Supreme Court and the rest of the right wing that we will not tolerate this blank. Blank, that pro-life, bull blank, If you're pro-life, you need to stand up for women's choice to choose to protect themselves and give themselves the the ability to do the right thing for themselves and their future. Going around and banning abortion puts a financial burden on everyone who is affected by it. Other chants throughout the course of the afternoon included, quote, abort the court, which is just foolish. And I don't know why grown adults would even consider this. I mean, I know it rhymes at all, but still, come on, you're, you're adults. And, quote, not the church, not the state. Women must control their fate. To that end, there was a wide range of signs, with one notable sign stating, why do guns have more rights than my vagina? Again, folks, it's, it never ceases to amaze me when it comes to insufferable feminists and these annoying cat ladies who stink of cat piss, who think they're being cute with their signs, when we all know that guns do not have more rights than a vagina, for the love of God. Okay? I mean, I don't want to be disparaging here, but it takes a human to fire a weapon, okay? It also takes a human to do something else with a vagina. Jesus Christ. I mean, do we really have to boil this down into into simple, you know, metrics here? I mean, Jesus Christ. And and when I read this, it just drives me crazy. So, for example, Maxine Mandel, the JCYD secretary, said everyone should be outraged 
by the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade, because even though abortions are still legal in New Jersey, which is exactly, so I don't know why you're still bitching about this, federal bans on birth control and gay marriage are still possible. No, sorry, Maxine, they're not. Okay, and if you did a little homework, honey, you would know that the precedent concerning same-sex marriage is predicated on the 14th Amendment. There are no court cases on the docket, neither at the state level or even pending in the Supreme Court. So again, I know it's great for fundraising. I know that it's great to, you know, hashtag and virtue signal and do TikTok videos about and go on Instagram Live and Facebook Live. I'm sorry, Maxine, you're doing yourself a disservice like, you're, like everybody else on the left who's having full-blown meltdowns. No, same-sex marriage is nowhere near in danger of being overturned. Clearly, we've seen what the justices have ruled when it comes to precedent. And by the way, again, you clearly didn't do your homework, honey, because if you read the decision which legalized same-sex marriage, it's predicated on the 1964 Civil Rights Bill, which prohibits discrimination. And that's the legal precedent that same-sex marriage is based on. So clearly, that's not going to get overturned. But it's easier for you to go and bitch and moan with everybody else that was in attendance with your little signs. And again, I know you want to be cute and rhyme, but again, you're grown-ass adults. Start acting like it. Do a little research. It's not that difficult. There is a search engine called Google. Perhaps you've heard of it. Use it, and you'll find out that I'm correct in everything I just listed. Again, you listen, I'm not trying to diminish anyone's right to protest or, or, or to assemble peacefully, but folks, do your homework. At least know what you're talking about when you're going to go in front of a camera or make up signs, and you look totally foolish if you don't know what you're talking about. Now, again, kudos to the JCYDs for going out there, showing solidarity. That's all well and good, as well as, as elected officials. But folks, do your homework and at least know what you're talking about and stop virtue signaling and hashtagging because you know what? That doesn't get anything done other than just make you look really foolish. Staying in Jersey City, again, thank you to John Hines from the Hudson County View for his report on this story. Apparently, the Hudson County Democratic Socialists of America chapter also hosted an abortion rights rally shortly after Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, again, they held a rally right in front of the Harborside office outside of U.S. Senator Obama Menendez's office right there in downtown Jersey City and ending ultimately at City Hall in, on Grove Street. In addition to them, the Jersey Anti-Violence Coalition movement also joined in the protest. We heard some chants like, quote, free abortion on demand without apology. Hey, hey, ho, ho, the Supreme Court has to go. Oh, my God. You know what? Again, as if I don't dislike socialists enough because you're economically illiterate, I mean, you have to act like children. I get it. You want to rhyme and virtue signal and hashtag, but you look like idiots. But what else is new when it comes to socialists? So, for example, they also demanded that the Congress codify Roe versus Wade to make abortion federal, federally legal in the Senate filibuster and for President Joe Biden, whenever he wakes up, to appoint more Supreme Court justices. Quote, according to activist Sophia Cutler, another insufferable feminist, it's an attack that will be especially felt by women of color, by trans and non-binary people, as if that's what we're really concerned about right now, in other marginalized communities. But it's, it's also an attack on working class communities. Barring our ability to get an abortion is an attack on working class families and communities and the right of determination. People like Menendez here are not up for the task of this fight. Who is up for this task of the fight? We are, as she shouted, along with the group response. Uh, Cutler also noted that several House Democrats are pro-life, including U.S. Representative Henry Culler, uh, among other U.S. Senators who are Democrats, Joe Manchin from West Virginia, and Kirsten Sinema, who also drew the ire of crowds at certain points. Folks, this is what annoys me about socialists, okay? Number one, you don't know anything about economics, clearly. You don't know anything about biology, clearly. And you clearly struggle with topics like sovereignty and the preservation of borders, which is written into our U.S. Constitution. But never mind the fact that you socialists are just a waste of life, organs, and tissues, but, and bones. But the, the point is that these are the type of insufferable activists that don't help the cause. You know, you want to go with your little hashtags and rhymes, you know, hey, hey, ho, ho, the Supreme Court has to go. I mean, Jesus Christ, my, my eight-year-old godson could think of something better. You're embarrassing yourselves, but again, what do you expect from socialist folks? And especially the Democratic Socialists of America, whether it's the national chapter or here in New Jersey or progressive Democrats of Hudson County or progressive Democrats of New Jersey. Again, folks, here in, here in the Garden State, your reproductive rights and freedom for ladies, women, biological women, right, because they're the people that get pregnant, okay, nobody else, right? These, are, these rights are secured and they're safe. Again, you want to buy a Plan B after your usual drunken weekend during single girl summer, you have access to it. And it's affordable and it's easy to get to. You want to be able to reconsider your pregnancy? 
guess what? There are plenty of Planned Parenthoods that get tons of money from the state legislature and from the federal government. So they're not going to go broke anytime soon. So if you need an abortion or a Plan B, it's easy to get here in New Jersey and across the river in New York. What you're bitching and moaning about, again, I don't know because we know that the case simply says it's now relegated to the states. And you know what, folks? Again, that's the 10th Amendment. Why am I having to teach class here when I should be talking about other issues? But again, when it comes to socialists and progressives and those on the left, it seems like I have to teach class every single week here on Talking Politics. And a story that caught my attention on Reuters, apparently a New York State judge struck down a recent law on Monday that gave hundreds of thousands of non-citizen residents, mostly illegals, of New York City the right to vote in municipal elections for mayor and other local offices. Judge Ralph Porcio of the New York State Supreme Court for Staten Island ruled the law violated the state constitution, which says that, quote, every citizen is entitled to vote. Now, the city council, controlled by Democrats, passed a law last December, and it went into effect in January after both Mayor Bill de Blasio and his, and his successor, you know, the black Bill de Blasio, ultimately Eric Adams, declined to either sign or veto it. The measure would not have been a factor until next year's elections for city council. Now, the law allowed an estimated 800,000 to 1 million non-citizens living in New York City as lawful permanent residents, apparently, of the United States or with U.S. authorization to work here to vote in elections for city office. And we all know that there are ways to get around that, folks. We all know that that happens in cities like New York, including those for the mayor's office and local council members, but not in statewide elections or federal elections. There are about 6.7 million people of voting age in New York City. Bravo to this state Supreme Court judge in New York, because folks, when it comes to left-wing activists and all of these groups that love to coddle illegals, believe me, they were waiting for this to happen. They were waiting for this to get to take action so they can just register illegals to vote because that's what they want. Thankfully, someone believes in the Constitution and believes in the state Constitution. But trust me, folks, if there are people here in New Jersey, like the New Jersey Alliance for Immigrant Justice, right, clowns like Amy Torres, useless clowns like Patty Campos Medina, and other insufferable activists, trust me, if they can try to make it work here in New Jersey, they'll certainly make the effort. But thank God in, in, in the Empire State that that judge ruled correctly. It's not going to stop those on the left, folks, that don't care about the sanctity of elections or preserving democracy. It's funny when they want to preserve democracy when it suits them. But you know what? Kudos to this judge because, thankfully, illegals won't be able to vote in elections anytime soon. And that's our show for this week. To check out all the excellent programming brought to you by the Hudson Media Group, check out their websites, www.hmgtvshows.com, as well as www.livestream.com slash hmgtv. Also, check out the Hudson Media Group on their YouTube page. Make sure you like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram and Twitter. Check out my own Instagram and Twitter, folks, at NoFilterUribe. It's the same handle for both. Make sure you like Talking Politics with Fernando Uribe on Facebook. And check out my own Facebook as well. It's the handsome guy with the Biden Sucks t-shirt right in the profile picture. You can't miss me. And also make sure, ladies and gentlemen, to always check out the five-time award-winning podcast, Talking the Hudson, by going to www.blogtalkradio.com slash Talking the Hudson. Episodes are free to listen to anywhere and anytime. And always remember, folks, if it's unbiased, unfiltered, and unafraid, it's always talking politics right here with the Hudson Media Group. I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, top 100 Latino, the Latino Spray Online Magazine, and your favorite conservative, Fernando Uribe, saying so long, and thank you so much for watching.